I'm at the uh, Arthur M. Sackler Museum at Peking University. I have a couple hours till they close. So I'm going to take a walk through and check it out. It's my first visit. I was down uh, off line four at the Paleozoological Museum this morning and plan on doing the planetarium, but it's closed Monday and Tuesday. So today's Tuesday. So I decided to come up here since I was up this way yesterday and I spent so much more time at the uh, old summer palace than I planned. I spent all day at uh, UN Ming Yuan walking around. I walked 12 miles yesterday. So uh, today it's raining, so I'm trying to do indoor things. Let's see. Galleries range chronologically divided according to seven periods by, used by Chinese teaching of archaeology courses. Paleolithic, Neolithic, Xia Shangzhou, Warring States, Qin Han, the Six Dynasties, and Sui Tang. And then you have Song Liao, Jin Yuan, uh, Jin Yuan Ming, and then I guess Qing, but they don't include that as a archaeology since I guess it's more modern, maybe. I went through the, uh, spent two days going through the ancient section of the National Museum, the recently refurbished and conglomerated uh, National Museum at Tiananmen Square, and they have a chronological presentation as well, which uh, is nice since at the Shanghai Museum I got a uh, more thematic grouping of stuff. Let's see. Three special exhibits illustrating the different kinds of excavations carried out by teachers and students. Paleolithic site of Jin Wei Shan Man in Yingko County, Liaoning Province, second Neolithic village site near Bi Shuang, Changdo County, Shandong Province, third Bronze Age site belonging to Jin State at Tian Ma Chukun, Chiwo County, Shanxi Province. So without English translations, this shouldn't uh, consume <laughs> more than a couple hours to walk through. I'll do my best to infer what I can. Here's a three-legged uh, cooking pot, it looks like, tripod vessel or a gui, I guess you would call it, or a pottery ding. A lot of this stuff you're gonna see in my videos if you watch the uh, extensive video I made at the National Museum. Paleolithic period, 3 million to 10,000 BP. Paleolithic period, the oldest in human history, spans the entire geological epoch of the Pleistocene. Dating 3 million to 10,000 years ago, archaeologists divide the Paleolithic into three phases, lower, middle, and upper. 280,000 BCE and earlier. Middle is 200,000 to 50,000 BCE. Upper is 50,000 to 10,000 BCE. Based on cultural developments and physical evolutionary changes in hominids together with changes in climate and environment, early hominids made technologically crude simple chip stone tools. It assumed that these creatures relied upon the strength of their collective efforts and engaged in hunting and gathering for their subsistence. Slowly over the millennia, hominids physically evolved from Homo erectus to archaic Homo sapiens to Homo sapiens sapiens. Human society in turn evolved from simple to more complex forms. These changes in society are reflected in the archaeological record, for example, the development in stone tool technology illustrated by the objects on display in this exhibit. We're here in Beijing. Here's the Bohai Inlet off the Yellow Sea. And uh, Zhou Kudian is the famous uh, Paleolithic site in uh, Beijing. Wang Fujing, uh, there's a Paleolithic site in the basement when they're excavating for the Oriental Plaza Mall, which I went to. It takes 
seven minutes to walk through their exhibit. There's not much to it, but it dates back to about 25,000 BCE. So down here on the other side of the Yangtze, Lee County. This was in the 80s, I think. They excavated some important stuff around uh, Zhejiang province and Hangzhou. I remember reading about that. Joe Kudian, they found Peking Man, which we read about this morning at uh, the Paleontological Museum. Hammerstones and uh, chipping stones. Here's an actual skeleton of Peking man, who is a, uh, even before Neanderthal, I think he's a Homo erectus, maybe. Let's see, La Shui man, Bai Bian Chiao village, Hubei province, 28,000 years ago. He's classified as a Homo sapien. Hmm. Let's see. Lived in the Beijing area. Fossils provide an important body of data. Researching connections between descendants of Peking man, Homo erectus, and remains of the upper caveman at Chokudian, modern Homo sapiens. So Peking man's the Homo erectus. And they're saying this guy is a Homo sapiens species. I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't look like it. They should articulate the uh, cranium. It's so hard to tell in that position. They make them look so flat-faced. So the Lonely Planet said there's no English, but I think they've since come through. You know, a lot of times I think the information in guidebooks has been repeated from like the 1970s and it depends on who is in charge of that section of the book, whether they actually have gone back to the same place in person, you know, in the last decade. They just repeat the same misinformation. <sighs> it's a dynamic city, rapidly modernizing Beijing, you know. Like Line 4 was only finished five years ago, it said when I came up from National Library today. Neolithic period, 8,000 to 2,000 years ago. Mm -mm -mm. Neolithic China began about 10,000 years ago, characterized by, or 8,000 BC to 2,000 BC, which is a big difference than 2,000 years ago. We began about 10,000 years ago, using polished stone tools, pottery, textile production, beginnings of agriculture, domestication, animals, economic management, developed from one dependent on natural resources to one based on production, referred to as Neolithic Revolution by many archaeologists. This new phase in human history of development totally changed the way of life on Earth and formed the foundation for the emergence of later civilizations all over the world. Many China's Neolithic cultures have developed advanced techniques for pottery and stone tool manufacture, and agricultural product production. During the Neolithic period, regional differences became more sharply defined, resulting, uh, someone has to explain that you can't just split up and hyphenate a word wherever you want it. It's supposed to be at a syllable. It makes it hard to read. <laughs> resulting in the emergence of several distinct cultural areas, three of which are reflected in this exhibit, the Yellow River Valley, the south and north of the Great Wall, the south and north of the Great Wall. Hmm. So you got the Jiangnan region south of the Yangtze, the Yellow River Valley, and then north of the Great Wall, which runs north of Beijing, and the mountains north of Beijing. Do, do, do. Throughout their 6,000 years of development and Changed China's Neolithic cultures clashed and interacted, merging in the end to form the initial stage of the unified Chinese civilization. Neolithic tools and decorative objects stone, pottery, bone, horn, shell. If 
You study their type, wear marks, manufacturing technology, you can learn a lot about the production activities, economy, technological traditions, even the different stages of development of the various archaeological cultures. You can also tell a lot about trade, usually, as well, where the pieces have to come from, where the closest area you could get that type of rock or shell from. And that tells you how long the trade routes may have been. Let's see, they're showing southern Yellow River Valley and northern in this exhibit. Yangtze River is where uh, rice cultivation starts in the world, is the theory that I've read. When I was at 2121 uh, Design Site uh, Museum there in Tokyo, they had a nice uh, museum exhibit on Kome rice. And that's where they said rice comes from. Middle Yangtze River Valley. <gasps> Stone roller and quern. Neolithic. Mm -mm -mm. Growing foxtail millet, broom corn millet. Sickles, stone axes to help them harvest. Pottery anvil. There's a human skull. Vast area north of the Great Wall, composed mainly of arid, cold grassland desert. Desert. The people living in this vast hilly region have always maintained a subsistence based primarily upon hunting and gathering. Their tool complex is characterized by chipstone tools and composite tools made by hafting microlith onto wooden or a bone shaft. Looks like an oracle bone there. They'd write uh, the first written Chinese characters are on the shoulder blades of ox. And they uh, would crack along, you know, lines that ran through the text. And that was a form of Sioux saying, bringing down a large mastodon, arrowhead. Is that an arrowhead? Small stone flaking flint napping techniques. They show here how you can hammer um, blanks off a core here. And then with that blank, you can turn it into small, finer tools for l working leather and uh, carving, making art and uh, textile and that sort of thing. And larger blanks you can use as spear points and knives, although they're kind of brittle. For that, corrugated pottery. There's a whirl there for smoothing the inside when you use the coil method for making pottery. You can see evidence of cooking on all these. Get a lot more nutrition out of the food when you cook it. Increase your brain size and your amount of protein. Makes you grow stronger and bigger. Neolithic cultures in northwest China as the Xianxi Yangshao culture located in the upper reaches of the Yellow River in northwest China developed. It pushed westward, stimulating the formation of a secondary culture area. First culture to emerge here was the Maji Yao, which appeared around 3000 BC. It was followed by the Qi Jia culture around 2000 BC. The Maji Yao culture is subdivided into three chronological chronologically distinct phases evolving one from the other, Ma Ji Yao, Ban Shan, and Ma Chang. These phases are characterized by urns and bowls decorated with complex, beautiful, and distinctive painted geometric designs. The Chijia culture is distinguished by its elegant monochrome burnished amphoras with wide loop handles. balls with three holes in them, huh? Game pieces.
Yangtze River Basin, Yangtze River Valley, another important center for Chinese prehistoric civilization. Geographically includes all of South China, can be divided into the South China Coastal Region, the Pearl River Valley, and the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. The middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze and the South China Coast are home to three major discernible cultural areas. Each culture area developed on its own, yet the interaction and exchange among them resulted in their sharing many traits. One on exhibit here are important pottery finds of the Peng Tushan and Dashi cultures, both located in the middle Yangtze region. Peng Tushan culture, Hunan province. So these are Dashi. By date here, early Neolithic, Calcolithic, late Neolithic. Hmm. By province, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Majibang, Hamudu, Songji, Liangzhu. Saw all these when I was in Suzhou, Hangzhou, and museums. Longshan, I've seen a bunch of Longshan stuff in the museums. Both here and in Shanghai. Tripod vessel. And so three legged ding there. Ceramic cooking vessel. Neolithic cultures of the Yellow River Valley, is a cradle of Chinese civilization as it's often referred to. Yellow River Valley carries deep symbolic significance for archaeologists researching ancient Chinese civilization. As early as 8,000 years ago, relatively developed prehistoric cultures had emerged in the Yellow River Valley in the region extending from the Loess Plateau in the west to the North China Plains, the early Neolithic cultures of the Lao Guangtai, Pai, uh, Pei, Li Gong, and Xishan, with their handmade rough surface gray and red wares, developed into the Yangshou culture, known for its burnished red bowls and wares decorated with designs painted in black on red or buff background. This culture in turn led to the Longshan culture, the last phase of the Neolithic characterized by gray or black tripod wares. The progression of cultures in this region reflects both the diversity and unity of China's prehistoric cultures. The good geographical position coupled with the high level of economic development suggests that the civilization in the Yellow River Valley was one of, China, was one of China's earliest. Young Tai. Pinan Gang, Pai Li Gang, Yang Shou, Zhang Shi, Yang Shou, Yang Shou. Shan two culture period. Let's see. Remains of a Neolithic village excavated at Bichuang, Changdao County, Shandong Province, four thousand thirty five hundred BC. Neolithic village site excavated by the Department of Archaeology, Peking University, autumn 1981, spring 1987, lies near the village of Bijuang, Chengdu County, Shandong Province, eastern part of Diyashan Island, site occupies 10,000 square meters. So it's out here in the south area there, the Bohai Sea. Here's Liao Dong Peninsula. I think this is Liao Ning, isn't it? Province in there. Jiaodong Peninsula, 
Here's the Yellow River. There's Beijing. Da Wenku culture. Archaeologists excavated the foundation of more than 90 houses together with hundreds of stone, bone, and pottery artifacts. Most of these artifacts, especially the pottery tripod vessels, are very similar to ones from the Da Wenku culture. Other objects, such as the round shaped jars with mushroom shaped lug handles, are similar to jars with Jiao Dong Peninsula, whereas still others, such as the tube shaped jars, are similar to where it's found on the Liao Dong Peninsula. These similarities suggest the likelihood of contact and communication between the Jiao Dong and Liao Dong Peninsula during the Neolithic period. The foundation of small houses has been arranged to face a large one, suggesting that the large houses function as a community center and implying the society of this late Neolithic culture had been organized into clans. The tools and pottery all illustrate the strength of production and the economic development of life at that time. They classified as part of the Da Wenku culture. Here's pottery from there. Pitcher shaped tripod, type of gui, globular, small neck jar, lug handles. There's a street not far from where I'm staying on Nanlugu over towards the Lama Hostel called Ghost Street. And it comes from the word gui. They have a large bronze gui at the east end. I have never walked down that far. But it's a bunch of restaurants. And the gui is for food going back to the Western Joe or even earlier, I guess, as evidenced by this to the Neolithic. Flat bottom jar, straight lip bowls. Funerary purposes, quite small, non functional. Yeah. This one's in the shape of a animal. I don't know if that's a chicken or that's supposed to be bird shaped gui. Tripod gui. I don't know if it's gui or gui. I've asked the pronunciation of Chinese speakers a couple times and you don't say it for a week and you forget the name, you know, how exactly it's pronounced. Kind of back to square one. I don't bother remembering rules of grammar. It's not worth it. There's too many exceptions in English. My parents are English teachers. So I very quickly stopped uh, frustrating myself with remembering rules of grammar and just remembered them by the word, you know. I should be on track to get around most of this exhibit if I stay at this pace. So now we're into the Bronze Age. So if you ever go through thematic galleries like Shanghai Museum, they group everything by the bronzes, you don't quite get the same effect of going from Neolithic where everything is pottery and uh, Paleolithic where everything is stone, you know to uh, the Bronze Age and then all of a sudden you have all this shiny copper and you have to imagine this stuff has got its green patina on it but if you look close you can see what the color would have looked like or close to what it might have looked like originally when I was at the Poly Art Museum here in Beijing they had a couple pieces that uh, had uh, lids with lip seals and uh, the insides of them had been sealed so well that you could still see po uh, pieces of copper that had almost no uh, patina. So the Shia, the Shang, and the Zhou peers, the Shia is like a semi-mythical dynasty. Not all that well documented, but the Shang and Zhou are, as I understand it, 
Archaeologically, so we're around 2000 to mid 5th century BC. Archaeologically, the Xiaosheng Western Zhou and Spring Autumn periods belong to the Bronze Age. Historically, these periods mark the beginning of China's dynastic system, uh, dynastic system, and signal China's entry into an urbanized stage of early statehood and civilization. This is when they started studying gynecology, I think is what they mean. <laughs> they mean dynastic. Um, they all became gymnasts, is what they're trying to say. Uh, that's why they're so good at the Olympics, at the at the ring event, you know. The material culture at this time reached an unprecedentedly high level with artisans producing large numbers of exquisitely beautiful bronze ritual vessels, musical instruments, and weapons, all used by the elite members of a highly stratified society. A fully developed and mature writing system appeared at this time, initiating a long tradition of Chinese history. People of the Xia Shang Zhou states, together with people from other regions, evolved in succession in the Central Plains. Together they created the magnificent Chinese Bronze Age civilization, which laid the foundation for ensuing political unified dynasties. Shui Shan, Wang County, Daitianxi, Xia Jidan, Zhengzhou, Du Jai Tai, Wu Chang. The Erle Tu and Proto Shang cultures. According to the classical Chinese text, the Xia dynasty, historically China's first, was established in the 21st century BC and lasted until the 16th century BC. As the radiocarbon dates of the Erle Tu site in Henan province roughly correspond to those were recorded for the Xia dynasty, and because of this, cultures distributed in western Henan, Henan, and southern Shaanxi, the same area historically documented for the Xia. It is very probable that the early two culture is in fact the Shia dynasty. A few bronzes were discovered at sites belonging to the early two culture, reflecting a likely dependence on everyday wares being pottery. In this case, are vessels characteristic of the culture and other culture contemporaneous with early two developed in southern Hebei and northern Henan province, an area associated with the activities of the Shang ancestors. The bronze culture found here predated the Shang dynasty and exhibited a hereditary connection with the Shang culture. Because of this, it classified as proto-Shang. Pottery items also characterized proto-Shang remains, among them the Li-style tripods with rolled lips and deep-bellied pedestal bowls type do are frequently found. Char type gang, Jang steamer, Jan jar. This is a Lee cooking vessel, a dough, a do. a female deer. Musical instruments of the Shang and Zhou dynasties. Music played an important ritualistic and military role in the Society of Bronze Age China. Ancient musical instruments include not only percussion instruments such as drums, bells, chimes, but also wind instruments such as flute and mouth organs. The now type bells, which appeared during the Shang dynasty, stood on their handles with mouths facing upwards. They were played by striking their sides with wooden mallets. The, by the late Shang, fully developed sets of Niao had appeared, arranged in order from smallest to largest. Simple tunes could be played on these sets. I always wonder how they know that they were sat upside down. I guess it wouldn't make sense to have something in that shape if it wasn't sitting on a stick. <clears throat> During the Zhou period, sets of Bianjong type bells appeared. The Zhang bells developed from the now, but they were played by striking them when suspended from beams by their mouths opening downward. The musical range of the Bianjong bell was broad. They were used to play complex melodies on religious and ritual occasions. So first upturned, then downturned. Kind of like the modern bells you have. Bell type meow, jiang, meow, jiang. So jiang in the back, jiang. These are now. Usually two tonal. 
Two-tone Nintendo. So we've got some uh, bronzes here. Gia, that's the wine vessel. I saw some of these used for the ceremony at the Ming tombs on the weekends. Twice a day they do a little offering. The Empress comes out with her concubine or the Empress Dowager anyway. And the Emperor comes out and does some offerings. It's kind of cool. And they have a Jua. Gui, Yan. It's a Yan, huh? And that's a Ding. The Shanghai Museum is done in the shape of a Ding vessel. The Shang Dynasty culture, 16th to 11th centuries BC, a strong Shang state had emerged in the central plains of northern China. Its powerful elite class ruled through military force and control of a well-developed ritual system which used expensive bronze vessels. The bronze vessels associated with the wine with wine number nearly twice as many as other types, suggesting that wine played an important role in rituals. The solid three-legged ding cauldrons used to cook and prepare the animal sacrifices also played an essential part in the sacrificial rituals. They were later used to symbolize the authority of the ruler. Bronze was also used to cast weapons, for example, halberd, battle axe, and knife by the Shang in their fierce military struggles. Despite the new emphasis on um, bronze vessels, everyday wares were still made of pottery. In addition, even some ritual vessels were made of pottery or stone. The Shang people practiced a form of divination by scratching tortoise plastrons or animal scapula. Yeah, that's the Sioux saying with the oracle bones, the divinity inscriptions and size on these so-called oracle bones point to a relatively mature writing system. The contents of these divinatory inscriptions reveal a lot about Chang politics, military fails, economics, culture, and religion. Some pottery and some more bronze. Nothing here I haven't seen before. Chopping table. Do, do, do. A sun cup, huh? And what do we got here on the bottom? An axe head, and what's this thing in the middle? A shield handle? Chariot strapping. Western Zhou Dynasty culture from 1711 BC. Western Zhou refers to the early half of the Zhou Dynasty when it had its capital located in the west near today's Xianxi. Uh, Xi'an. In Shanxi. The Zhou state had emerged in the Jingwei valleys of the Shanxi province. Toward the end of the Shang Dynasty, the style of Western Zhou pottery developed out of the local culture in that area, the Proto-Zhou culture. While similar to the Shang culture in many ways, the ritual system of the Western Zhou was more strict and ordered. Among the various ritual vessels, the set of the bronze Ding tripod, Kui serving containers, and other food vessels served to mark the status and rank of the elite. Tripod. What do we have here? What are they call them that. Notice the decorations getting rather intricate and sophisticated. Culture from the border regions. During the Xishang dynasties, a number of regional bronze cultures existed which fell within the sphere influence of the central court, yet were clearly outside the mainstream of Xi and Shang culture. The stratigraphically lower Xia Jai Diang culture and the stratigraphy, stratigraphically upper level Jiang Xia Yuan culture reflect the semi-nomadic cultures of the north. Shang Jia Yuan yielded bronze vessels very similar to Shang's, as illustrated by the massive Ding tripod in this case, whereas the socket of raised axe clearly shows a northern trait, the uniqueness of the lower level Shia Jiadan culture is strikingly illustrated by the brilliantly painted pottery from the Didianji site excavated in the Aoning province together with the elongated dark gray wares imitating tripod wine vessels. In northern Jiangxi province in southern China, the distinctive Wu Chang culture produces, uh, provides a glimpse into developments there. The characteristics of the pottery on display here clearly differ from the pottery of the Shia and Shang areas.
Lower Shia Jidian culture, Chi Fang, Inner Mongolia, Turquoise Bracelet, Hmm. Hubei Province. Shang This one's got bats on it Tripod ding Terrine Gui Midwestern Joe This is what I saw outside. They're having some advertisements for Mayan. Was it self portrait 2003 in an Adidas Dutta? International Artist Exhibition Program. That was what I saw on their website when I looked at it a few days ago to see if they had any current exhibits. Is this a brick kiln? Made a coffin out of brick kiln. Do they have an artist in residence program now? <clears throat> Maya or illusion deals with human existence and non existence, as in the veil of Maya. Hmm. The painted veil. Is that Somerset Maugham novel set in China? Dr. Fang, Dr. Fane. He just redid that with Edward Norton back in 2006. So not that recently now. attempts they had a huge square ding on uh, Hafong Street there was it Qian Hafong Street in uh, Hangzhou when I was there it's not that uncommon to see that Uh, great castles of Europe, what are we looking at? Mane, Aquatint, Edward Mane, 
Mont Saint Miguel. James McNeil Whistler, Whistler's Lady, La Robe Rouge, the red dress. Mont Saint Miguel, Normandy, huh? Where is that? Medieval city somewhere. Tour de Grosse Horloge à Evreu. Hmm. J.M.W. Turner, Wimbledon Lock. Hmm. Mezzo Tint, Etching by Turner. Masters of Modern Art, Picasso. No, Chagall. Bay of Angels. Henry Matisse, Head of a Woman. Picasso La Biche, the doe deer. Mark Chagall, the milkmaid in the pot of milk. Milkmaid imagines her that with the money she receives from the sale of her milk, she'll buy some eggs that will hatch into chickens, and the chickens she will buy a pig, and after that a cow. Last the milkmaid tumbles to the ground, spilling the milk, which puts an end to her dreams. Ruel Duffy. Pablo Picasso. You're just bitten by a snake. Picasso's Le Terrain, the Bull Ox. Chagall, the Old Maid. Chagall, Lovers with Red Sun, Pablo Picasso to a Girl Picking Flowers, Pablo Picasso profile of a woman with her lush hair seen from behind. Devoted to the Spanish Renaissance poet Luis Luis Gongora. Hmm. Sonetto Heroica. Heroic sonnets. William Blake. Hmm. Fall of Satan. Parnassi, Hadrian's Villa. Tivoli. Emperor Hadrian, second, third centuries, ordered this villa to be built as a retreat. From his palace in Rome, Canopus, bathing area designed with Greek decorations. In 10 Vidut, he devoted to the ruins of Hadrian's villa, Paranesi, using his imagination to create a sense of desolation and decay. Paranesi, Ponte Solar, Solario. William Hogarth. Southwark Fair. <laughs> it's Bedlam. Piranesi, Fontana di Trevi, the Trevi Fountain. Jean Baptiste. Hmm. Stubach Falls, 
Svitzerlander. Hm. Theodore Rousseau, Rock Oak Forest of Fontainebleau, Deer Forest, Daubigny, Adolf Apien, La Piche, Jean Francois, Ginet, Ginani, Ginane. Jean Baptiste Simon Chardin, The Morning Toilet. Lithograph illustrating Shakespeare's Hamlet by Eugene Delacroix. Delacroix. Eugene Delacroix. Eugene Delacroix, Death of Ophelia. Eugene Delacroix, actor's performer of Gonzago. Hamlet. Hamlet and the ghost. It's a ghost. Eugene Delacroix. Rubens, Theodore Garakwalt, Jules Dupree, Windmill Soligny, some early photograph, Millet, Spinner from Auvernier, Auvernier, Charles Jacques. Enchanting world of Antoine Watteau. Hmm. Transformed the nature of French painting in his lifetime. Born in Valenciennes, France. Grew upon traditions. Northern artist Peter Bruegel, Paul Rubens celebrated the joys of human life in their works. Rejected classicism. Turned instead to the theater for inspiration. A dream world for actors, clowns, romantic lovers. Having seen paintings from China brought back to here by Jesuits, he was the first major European artist to depict scenes with Chinese figures in the painted decorations he created for the Chateau de la Muette around 1710. Created an entirely new subject for painters, the Fete Galante. Galante. Fete Galante. A scene in which men and women enjoy themselves outdoors, sometimes in imaginary landscapes. His work was pure poetry. Le Il est enchanté, the enchanted island. Landscape with cow and cow herd. La perspective. Hmm. Old Master Prince from Dorer to Rembrandt. Smallest part of the collection they do, however, have major prints by two great Northern Renaissance artists, Albrecht Dorer, Peter Bruegel, two fine etchings by Rembrandt, most importantly, Dutch Flemish French Italian landscape, delightful etching by Abraham Bolsa. Jacob van Roosdale, the great beach with two men and a dog. Peter Bruegel, large alpine landscape. A Gideus Sadler. Abraham Bossy. Albrecht Dorer. Did I miss the upstairs? Where's the uh, Yuan and Ming? Or the uh, <laughs> everything besides 
locked up already? If there's an upstairs, best to infer what I can. Here's a three legged uh, cooking pot, it looks like. Tripod vessel, or a gui, I guess you would call it, or a pottery ding. A lot of this stuff you're going to see in my videos if you watch the uh, extensive video I made at the National Museum. Hmm. Paleolithic period, three million to 10,000 BP. Paleolithic period, the oldest in human history, spans the entire geological epoch of the Pleistocene, dating three million to 10,000 years ago. Archaeologists divide the Paleolithic into three phases, lower, middle, and upper, 280,000 BCE and earlier. Middle is 200,000 to 50,000 BCE. I'm at the uh, Arthur M. Sackler Museum at Peking University. I have a couple hours till they close. So I'm gonna take a walk through and check it out. It's my first visit. I was down uh, offline four at the Paleozoological Museum this morning and plan on doing the planetarium, but it's closed Monday and Tuesday. So today's Tuesday. So I decided to come up here since I was up this way yesterday and I spent so much more time at the uh, old summer palace than I planned. I spent all day at uh, Yuan Ming Yuan walking around. I walked 12 miles yesterday. So uh, today it's raining, so I'm trying to do indoor things. Let's see. Galleries range chronologically divided according to seven periods by used by Chinese teaching of archaeology courses. Paleolithic, Neolithic, Xia Shangzhou, Warring States, Jin Han, the Six Dynasties and Sui Tang. And then you have Song Liao, Jin Yuan, uh, Jin Yuan Ming. And then I guess Qing, but they don't include that as a archeology span since I guess it's more modern. Maybe stuff around uh, Zhejiang province and Hangzhou. I remember reading about that. Joe Kudian. They found Peking Man, which we read about this morning at uh, the Paleontological Museum. Hammerstones and uh, chipping stones. Here's an actual skeleton of Peking Man. It was a, uh, even before Neanderthal, I think he's a Homo erectus, maybe. Let's see, La Shui Man, Bai Bian Chiao Village, Hubei Province, 28,000 years ago. He's classified as a Homo sapien. Hmm. Let's see. Lived in the Beijing area. Fossils provide an important body of data. Researching connections between descendants of Peking. I went through the, uh, spent two days going through the ancient section of the National Museum, the recently refurbished and conglomerated uh, National Museum at Tiananmen Square. And they have a chronological presentation as well which uh, is nice since at the Shanghai Museum I got a uh, more thematic grouping of stuff. Let's see. Three special exhibits illustrating the different kinds of excavations carried out by teachers and students. Paleolithic site of 
Jinhui Shanman in Yingko County, Liaoning Province, second Neolithic village site near Bi Shuang, Changdou County, Shandong Province, third Bronze Age site belonging to Jin State at Tianma Chukun, Chiwo County, Shanxi Province. So without English translations, this shouldn't uh, consume <laughs> more than a couple hours to walk through. I'll do my uppers 50,000 to 10,000 BCE based on cultural developments and physical evolutionary changes in hominids together with changes in climate and environment. Early hominids made technologically crude simple chip stone tools. It assumed that these creatures relied upon the strength of their collective efforts and engaged in hunting and gathering for their subsistence. Slowly over the millennia, hominids physically evolved from Homo erectus to archaic Homo sapiens to Homo sapiens sapiens. Human society in turn evolved from simple to more complex forms. These changes in society are reflected in the archaeological record, for example, the development in stone tool technology illustrated by the objects on display in this exhibit. We're here in Beijing. Here's the Bohai Inlet off the Yellow Sea. And uh, Zhou Kudian is the famous uh, Paleolithic site in uh, Beijing. Wang Fujing, uh, there's a Paleolithic site in the basement when they're excavating for the Oriental Plaza Mall, which I went to. It takes psh, seven minutes to walk through their exhibit. There's not much to it, but it dates back to about 25,000 BCE. So down here on the other side of the Yangtze, Li County, this was in the 80s, I think. They excavated some important...